as teenagers. We used to come out here swimming. It was a really good pool. And some years ago, somebody noticed a bit of an oily slick here and they sent the police divers here. They pulled two cars out of the bottom of the pool because it's pretty deep. <laughs> <laughs> it was only the oily slick, otherwise nobody would have known they were there. And I reckon there was a story, something about the guy that came down here with the train or whatever to get it out was actually his car. We're coming up to where we turn into the golf club now on our left. Yeah, we spent a lot of time playing golf together. They were good years. Very windy here in the winter time. I got a phone call from somebody that lived in the town and said, I think the roof's gone off the golf course. The wind got under the back of it yeah. and just peeled the whole roof over. And there were the fluoro tubes laying on top and none of them broke. Yeah, when it's green, it's absolutely beautiful. Be around about here somewhere, I reckon. Up there in the background, in the distance, you can see the mound, shooters being here and firing into that mound. And in front of that, there was a pit. And when I was young, as a kid, we used to earn a bit of pocket money by being the markers in those pits. We used to get about, I don't know, five shillings, 50 cents for an afternoon's work that you could go down the shop and spend afterwards. The ammunition was all Second World War and some of them were duds because occasionally one wouldn't get there. You'd get shad in dirt because it didn't quite make the distance. This is where I went to school. There were about 50 kids there were two rooms. That was the big room and that was the little room. And the little room had the library in it as well. Today, when I look at what's here, compared to what we had, we really had nothing. Um, it's just unreal. And then we're coming up to the CFS station. We purchased a, a truck and uh, it was an old green international truck. It's probably the only green fire truck there's ever been. This is Bunyip Park. We've got the family tree here, starting from Daniel and Eliza, who are my great-grandparents, who settled here with their children, and then my grandfather and his family, and then my father and my siblings. When Anne first came to Kalunga, that's where I met her, and she actually worked there as, as a nanny. Hotel on the left, where many, many, many happy hours have been had. That's where we used to go for our ice creams after we'd been up to the rifle club and got our five bob or 50 cents. Now, over on the far right, you just see a few scraggly trees. That there is where my great-grandfather settled, the original settlement when he came north. That was where Frederick was brought up as a child, my grandfather. The place on the left up here further is where his sweetheart was. So courtship was only just across the paddock for my grandfather and grandmother. <laughs> we just finished shearing and we were branding the sheep and we run out of the branding paint. Dad said, well, jump on your motorbike and get another tin of paint. So away I went. It was about this patch here the lump of mud decided that the front wheel shouldn't turn anymore. So, of course, I went end over end, but the tin of paint went first. And it landed, the lid exploded off, road was painted blue, and I landed spread-eagled in it. Tattooed, blue paint. It was weeks before that tattoo disappeared. That, of course, is the homestead. That house is well over 100 years old, the original part. We've got photographs that will show what it was. God, oh, these are heavy nowadays. That I used to put them on my back once. You were supposed to have 14 stitches in a bag. And it's a long time since I've done this, so I'm not terribly quick. Sprocket's not supposed to get out of the yard, but the little blighter he does. That's a new horse, that one. You don't even want to think about how much they cost. Sprocket, hey, Sprocket, come here. Come on, boy, come on, come on. You're always a bit tentative, aren't you? You never quite get here. You usually sit down just before you get here, don't you? I was born at Blythe District Hospital. I was the youngest of five. After year seven, I left school. I was barely 14, and I came home to work on the farm with Dad, and that's all I'd ever wanted to do was to be a farmer. I well remember, and I wasn't terribly old, when we got the kerosene refrigerator. And boy, at the time, mum could make ice cream. And 
When you've never had ice cream, it was, it was fantastic. But when I compare it to the ice cream that we can make or get today, it wasn't too good. But every so often, nothing's cold in the fridge. So then you'd have to actually take everything out and tip the bloomin' thing upside down. It was something to do with the gases in it and they had to, they'd settle in the bottom. It's just another one of those things that we did that you don't have to do today. Fancy tipping the refrigerator upside down today. So 1963, I introduced a city girl to farm life. She learnt to drive the tractor. She learnt to drive the truck. She worked with me with the sheep. Stupid things, she'd call them. But she'd helped me do all of those things. She did a marvellous job for a girl that was, had nothing to do with farming and came out and had to learn the trade. So it's a different world. My dad, who was a veteran of two world wars, he was an Anzac veteran, ninth light horse, and he lived through the 1930s Great Depression, a period of time when a lot of people lost all of their assets just through hard times and the whole world economy. I don't think at any stage in my life I was at the point of throwing my hands in the air and saying, I can't do this anymore. But I do know people that did, they just said, I can't do this anymore. And I don't blame them for it because things did get pretty tight. One of the bigger frights I've had in life was uh, when Andrew was only about three, perhaps four years old, I'm not sure. And this stupid sheep again decided that it was going the other way and it charged the gate, knocked the gate down and the gate hit Andrew, which it was probably the biggest fright in my life when I picked up this absolutely lifeless little boy who was out stone cold and on his forehead, this massive swelling. And if anybody can drive to Clare Hospital any quicker than I did that day, I give them the challenge because it did not take us very long to get there. Fortunately, there was no real serious damage and we took him home again. And we can thank God for that because he could easily have been killed. And so I guess after that, I was very conscious of having children around things on a farm. And you may have noticed as you entered the farm today, the sign that says caution, free range children and animals. I believe the, the lady standing on the back is probably my mother. A guy walked into the bar and said, whose tractor's that out there on the back of the truck? And my brother sort of said, what's it to do with you, mate? It's mine. And the fella said, well, I'll tell you what, whatever you paid for it, I'll give you double. Because tractors were that hard to get at that point in time that uh, people were prepared to pay a lot of money to get a new tractor. My ingenious wife decided she could put curtains in there. It did attract a bit of attention from the neighbours, but anyway, it was very comfortable for me. My father was a little bit before his time in some ways. They developed a method here of working two of these old headers behind one tractor. You had extension steering. And the steering wheel of the tractor back onto the harvester with a steering wheel there. And then you had two ropes, one to engage the clutch and one to disengage it every boy's dream, the 1939 two-door Chev Coupe. I traded it in for an FJ Holden, but if only I still had that car today. There were less than 40 to 50 ever imported into Australia. I courted the wife in it, managed to, uh, to keep her, and uh, yeah, lovely old car. We made the move. It was a great decision because since we've been here, we've made some marvellous friends and Life is good. Oh, yeah, it was, the, it was the only way to go. There was no other life bar farming. It was great, you know, I, you, you just waited for the next rain, your, your anticipation of everything that was going to happen. Mm -hmm.